Hello and welcome to day one of creating a game plan. Today we're going to be going over how to deal with uh, Velvet. Just going to be going from left to right, so Velvet is the first character we run across. And she's actually one of the more interesting characters to talk about because she is the only character in the game that forces Oleander to be on the offensive most of the time. So... Uh, she's, uh, she's got some decent neutral, uh, I think that her biggest problem in neutral, Velvet, is that she doesn't really have good pressure, so her ability to try to weave in her own, like, up-close pressure instead of just always trying to run away and force you out is highly situational. It often requires a significant setup potentially even beyond her standard setups to keep you out for zoning. She's got to be able to keep you out and still have a setup left to make it so that she can, say, jump in on you or try to go for some amount of pressure and get an actual, like, up-close combo on you. And that's just very difficult for her to set up, so a lot of times it's not scary. And so it hurts her neutral that she just doesn't have a good way to weave in different types of pressure. She's just a zoner, and she's very good at it, but when you get in close to her, she has a hard time. So, her incredible lack of normal pressure actually hurts her neutral, even though we're not even talking about her uh, pressure yet. Uh, she's got bad air mobility. I think she's the only character in the game that has uh, no additional air mobility beyond jump. And she also... In addition to that, has got some pretty bad air buttons. If we look at her air buttons, uh, this is like a serviceable air to air. It's decent. This is never going to hit anyone ever, except maybe Tianhua. I don't <laughs> like that. Is not a move you use in neutral. And then uh, her JC, the last button here, is just. Uh, like, it technically, I guess, gives her some air mobility in the, like, small fringe case that it, like, pushes you backwards when you do it. And you might, on rare occasion, be able to use that to, like, avoid something that you would have fallen on otherwise. But outside of that, uh, I'd say that it hurts her more than it helps her because it puts her in ranges where, like... You think that you can hit, but you can't actually hit your opponent unless you uh, are willing to do your jump in a whole lot deeper than other characters have to. So you can't catch a character standing from just standard range like this super fast. You don't have anything like that that can just catch them, even if it's not like an overhead at that point in time because they can still be crouching under it. She just has like no way to approach with an aerial <laughs> even if she approaches with the only aerial she can really use air to ground uh, it just pushes her right back so the amount of setup that she needs to be able to jump in on you with effective pressure is pretty immense and it hurts her game and also makes it so that it's hard for her to escape the corner once she gets there because jumping out is like she is the worst at it out of anyone so that also makes it so that once she gets to the corner, she's kind of in a tough spot because she doesn't have great mobility options. There's no teleport moves, there's no jump in, uh, abilities. In fact, her only movement option, uh, beyond standard movement options, is her ability to slide after a dash. Which is kind of cool because it allows her to block after the startup animation of the dashes. Uh, even though she's sliding, she can still block low during the sliding animation. So she can move forward and block low at the same time, which very few characters in any game are able to say they can do. So that's actually kind of neat, but in general, she's using it to run away and slide back or try to get in at a certain range after she's got a good setup, and that's okay, but it's like, it's her only option that isn't dashing, and it's still just dashing while blocking. I mean, it's not really, it doesn't change up timings too much off of just dashing twice, Let's see? It's like two dashes, or just dash into slide is about the same for both options here so it's like i don't know it's still nice it's good it's a cool option for her to have but it's not the kind of movement that you would expect in neutral out of a character that wants to uh to scrap 
So she's just really bad at scrapping in neutral, and that's a big problem. Because despite how incredible her zoning is, it just makes it so that, like, against Oleander, uh, for example, if we go here... So Oleander's winning at this range. If we're in neutral here, Oleander's winning. So at round start, Oleander's just in a better spot. So, like, we hit with stand B, stand C, overhead, sweep, this crazy move, the new 6B... I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff that hits from round start. So, like, it's it's really tough for Velvet because in this position, she's losing. Right about here, maybe a single back dash back. Uh, it's pretty even. We still have a move that catches her, but it's only one move, so she's lost a lot of things she has to worry about. We can't go into strings if she blocks. So, it's about neutral here. But she also can't do her setups here because this will trip her up if she's trying to set up icicles or do uh any of that stuff it's out of the range of her shatters and uh her ice eruptions are okay here but they're just about as good as oleander's options so i would put this at about a 50 50 so all the way up to here oleander's actually perfectly happy playing neutral against velvet and that's a pretty long range which is why i don't think velvet's neutral is actually all that great the only thing that's great is once you get to about here it switches up to where Velvet doesn't have to worry about anything. Not even dash forward uh, 6B is going to hit from that range anymore. And now she can set stuff up and not have to worry about it. And then, of course, anywhere further than that, the little bit of screen that's left, uh, she's much better here. The big thing that Oleander's got that a lot of other characters don't, though, is that although Velvet's ranged game is better than Oleander's, Oleander has a ranged game. So she's actually able to contest with magic f and then throwing out magic fireballs which wall splat so you get a big uh, amount of time to either rush in or gain some more magic or whatever you want to do in that situation and the power of oleander's uh magic spark if it's got two or more magic behind it is that it's got essentially a hit of armor against other projectiles so you can easily beat out a velvet setup with a fireball or especially or a magic fireball or especially fireball into magic fireball where you have three hits of projectile going in a big burst and while velvet is better than you overall because you have to then restock magic to get to that point and she kind of just has magic as a uh extra help with her snowflakes she's gonna get beaten out by that moment and if she loses at that moment then she gets wall splatted and if she gets wall splatted then you get to do whatever you want to if you've got meter you can react to that with beam super into fred into bad things happen to velvet uh you can also teleport if you've got magic so you know, you'll be able to burst through her uh, stuff sometimes, even with just, like, air fireball into normal fireball, because you do have two fireballs, right? And you can change their speeds, uh, if we can throw fireballs. So you can have two fireballs they are going to catch her at around the same time, and then you still have options afterwards. So it's pretty nice where you can kind of just throw throw slow fireballs into fast fireballs uh deal with some of the icicles that are coming in so you can jump in throw a fireball and beat one of the icicles so if you got an icicle that's up there that you can that might be messing up your attacks you can double jump break the icicle and then you'll have actually still gained some uh room even though the spark throws you back a little tiny bit you still gain a lot off of your double jump so oleander's got the ability to actually still play a ranged game. She wants to get in, of course, but you have the ability to win from this range, which a lot of characters just don't. So that's a really powerful tool for Oleander. In addition, uh, you've got Double Jump, and we already sort of talked about that, but Double Jump is really good, right? You can mess up her ice explosions. She might think you're landing on it, and you jump over it, and then you can run right in, and that's super good. Uh, and then, of course, if we do hitboxes for a second, I think they're over here. Uh, one of the fun things we can do, I know we've talked about wave dashing before, so we're not going to go in depth about it, of course, but obviously you do it by going forward and holding down, but you can also do it by going forward and holding down back, which allows you to block 
for certain frames during the rave dash. So that just gives you additional frames where it's possible that maybe the explosion goes off and you were already blocking. So even if you mess up once in a while, that'll just save you if you practice some little pieces of tech like that. So there's always little things that you can do to polish up your game plan. And that might not be the first of them, but I wanted to point out stuff like that because I think it's neat. Uh... So, yeah, we can deal with that. We've got a pretty fast dash back in. We've got double jumps. We've got teleports. We've got um, chapter traps can be used to beat out projectiles, and they give a Oleander access to angles she normally wouldn't. So we can beat the high-flying snowflake with a chapter trap that goes up and beats it for us. Uh, we can just leave a snowflake or a uh, chapter trap on the ground in front of us, and that might give us the option to uh, not have to worry about the D, the 5D snowflake, because it's just going to beat it out. So now we can play a game where we don't have to worry about that snowflake for a second because it doesn't affect us. So she's got a lot of cool answers. Uh, and, you know, a magic for magic trade is not great for Oleander because Velvet's going to keep on gaining magic just as the game goes on. Uh, so we don't want to be doing that too often, but if we can use it to get a setup where she has to respect, like, say, the fireball that's coming in and the teleport that might happen afterwards or whatever, that's a big deal. Now we've got more options because she doesn't have a super fast, unreactable projectile that's gonna, just going to smack us from half screen. So Oleander well, actually's got a lot of cool, fun uh, zoning counterplay, so we can actually play that game to some degree. We're not as good as Velvet is, but we're good enough to be able to win it for a moment and that moment is all you need to be able to get into her face and be in around this range where she just really does not want to be. Uh, final note for Velvet, and we're going to turn on hitboxes again for this, is that she's got great anti-airs. So uh, she's got... Oh, she's got um, probably, if not the best, very close to one of the best 6As in the game. It's just, look at that hitbox. That hitbox is great. It comes out super fast. It goes super high. It goes pretty far horizontal. It's just good. And you're going to get hit by this in situations where you weren't even, like, thinking about getting hit by an anti-air. And then she's got 2B. Again, she gets a crouching hurt box. And then a hitbox that goes about twice as high as that. Uh, you can't cross this up either because it's a 2 input. So that's pretty solid. Uh, it's uh, got places. It's circumstantial, but still, it's nice that she's got an additional anti-air here. Uh, interestingly, her jab. See how high that jab goes? It actually goes above her head level. So that I believe that's the highest jab in the game by quite a bit, actually. And you can use that as a super fast anti-air. The quote-unquote fastest anti-air in the game at jab speed. But it doesn't give you that uh, beautiful, super low crouching hurt box against jump-ins. So you have to be careful, but it can sometimes just beat stuff because it's super fast. So you can just kind of throw that out as a very low uh, risk anti-air move that also can't be crossed up. So that's super nice. And then finally, she's got some magic options. The biggest one, of course, is her 2D. Uh, from close range, and then from further ranges, she's got some fun stuff. Just these snowflakes in general are just really good at stopping jump-ins because they just hit that jump arc so perfectly. So from further away, you know, she's able to stop you from jumping by making a hitbox that just appears right above your head. And then for, uh, she can also just sort of have one that's coming down towards you that either forces you to block and stay grounded, which is kind of what she wants so she can chip you, or to try to dash through it where she can attempt to use ice explosions to catch you while you're doing stuff and uh, then start off her offense with that. And so in any of those instances, she wins the neutral. So she's got good anti-airs, good zoning, and pretty much bad everything else. So honestly, it's kind of like... Uh, like Oleander's good at about half of the screens, so she's got to watch out. And can zone. And can burst zone better than Velvet can. That's a big one. Uh, Oleander's 
momentary burst zoning is actually a little bit better than Velvet's. So she has to be careful. Uh, we already sort of talked about her pressure. We'll go in on that now. But uh, Velvet has no low normals. This is not a low. So her only low options are super high startup moves we're talking like 18 to 19 frames like slower than your standard characters like C moves heavy moves and uh, one of them is minus 19 on block so it requires magic to stay safe and the other one is uh, her DP which requires magic to even use so both of them require magic to even be like serviceable basically so she's got very little pressure for the low game. It makes it so that some of her best pressure games is actually her DP, which is obviously her low, versus a throw. And she doesn't get much off the throw unless she's got a setup. So sometimes you can see whether or not the throw just doesn't give her anything. Like, you'll be able to look at that bef with the setup before she does anything and be like, oh, if I take the throw here, I'm taking, you know, whatever it is, 400 damage, and that's it. Whereas, uh, you know... A lot of other characters, you don't get the uh, the telegraphs of which of her options are super good versus super bad right now. So, like some of her best stuff is that DP low versus throw during in pressure, and it's not great. So that's not where she wants to be. She wants to be finishing you off at that range if she has to. But if she's going to be mixing you up, she wants to be mixing you up from here. Oh, and I didn't talk about this earlier, but her backdash in neutral is ridiculous. I believe it's the fastest backdash in the game, and it goes some of the farthest of any backdashes in this game as well. So it's super good. Uh, she's very good at getting away. And that is important for zoning because you need to have space. So, again, another great tool for zoning that just doesn't give her any real offense. Uh, she doesn't have good, like, backdash into normal buttons, but she's got that. It's okay. She can definitely backdash, beat a button, and stand H, so you do kind of have to worry about that. Uh, she can use that as a, a cool little, like, reversal tool, so I found that to be interesting. But not, uh, not anything super amazing to write home about for her neutral. That's probably one of the coolest little tricks she's got, and it's basically just, like, okay. Um, then on defense, she's super good. In fact, like, arguably her defense is better than her offense. Uh, and I mean that in an offensive sense. So on offense, she only has throw versus DP because you're not going to be in the air. When you wake up, you're going to be on the ground. But when you're trying to beat her, you can beat her DP by jumping over it. But if you do that, you give her access to her anti-air. So... We can turn the hitboxes off and bring her over to the corner. And basically, her DP is absolutely nuts. Uh, despite its very slow startup, it is a low that combos on hit, is fully invincible, uh, and is plus on block. So it's just a dp where it's also her turn afterwards which is pretty great uh for her <laughs> so that's scary and the fact that she gets a combo off of it means that it's a real threatening option and not just a standard dp which is usually quite strong enough by itself as a get off me but uh moreover than that uh Anything that you do that is fast enough that it is going to catch her anti-air on startup will lose to the DP, and anything slow enough that it is still in the air to beat the DP will lose to her anti-air. So she now has a real mix-up of comboable DP versus anti-air instead of comboable DP versus throw. So that's super spooky. Uh... <laughs> And uh, she actually has, like, arguably a better mix-up against you when she's waking up than she does when you're waking up against her, which is totally nuts. Uh, but we've got ways of dealing with that. So what I'm going to do now is go through kind of an opening game, middle game, and end game scenarios and stuff that I think is good versus stuff that I don't think is good. And uh, we'll go from there, just using Oleander's options. So obviously, at round start, 
Uh, Oleander's actually in a pretty good place. Velvet really needs to be further away than this to get her game plan going. And uh, if Oleander gets pushed back a little bit, she's more okay with that than the ma vast majority of the cast. So uh, the good options, I think, for starting the game are uh, first... If you're not feeling like being the super aggressive type on startup or on round start, if we just go to normal here, you'll see that uh, Velvet starts with nothing and slowly gains her magic over time. So this is going to beat you out eventually, but at round start, she doesn't have any way of stopping you from just reading, right? She doesn't really get anything until she's got a meter there and until she does the only thing she has that hits you is icicle in the air so she can't use any of her icicle or, or yeah her ice explosions she doesn't have access to snowflakes which is the main way she's going to be able to stop you from just reading in the air and she only has one option that beats you and she's got to jump to do it and if she jumps to do it then you can react to that by reading on the ground instead so because there once she's done that she doesn't have access to any of her options that hit you on the ground so without magic she's kind of sunk and you're going to get two to three magic before she even gets one at round start and what that allows you to do especially since she doesn't have access to real uh ranged magic pressure yet what that allows you to do is it allows you to uh just have that burst that beats her out instantly so she immediately has to respect your zoning as better than hers for maybe the first like 10 20 seconds of the game depending upon how she's using her magic and that allows you to pick up the space that you lost very quickly get in on anything maybe just win with a fireball that launches her across the screen and gets you right into the spot right by the time she gets up you're right into this spot where she doesn't want you to be again and then of course you threaten the standard like tk fireball into teleport or just random teleport that doesn't have a uh, tell before it you know like jump and pretend that you're going to get more meter and actually just come down with an attack cross up jump b you know, you've got a bunch of options that she now has to deal with immediately as the round begins, and she doesn't really have the tools to deal with it yet because she has to build them up first. So that's really good. A uh, few little things that I think we missed. Uh, she gains, uh, Velvet gains magic su or meter super fast, so she's always going to have the ability to cross canter. And you have to keep that in mind with your pressure. But obviously Oleander's got this beautiful move that can beat Cross Canter. So she's got one of the easiest counter plays to Cross Canter in the game. Which is just to finish your pressure or whatever you think that they're going to Cross Canter. With Teleport back it just kind of beats it for free most of the time. Uh, and that's super good. And then uh, we did miss one thing that Velvet can do, which is she can move your character around, which can be frustrating. When she's got magic, she can push you around. So uh, she can make it so that your jumps go into icicles that you were going to jump over, or they fall back down into uh, stuff that you thought you had already avoided. And that can be very difficult and frustrating. But again, you have a little bit of ability to counteract that with double jumps and kind of make it difficult for her to decide whether or not using magic in that way is a good idea. And your counterplay doesn't cost any magic to do, but hers does. So she actually has to be the one who is dedicating resources to deal with your stuff, even though she's the one zoning. So uh, lots and lots of nice things that Oleander can do there. Uh, the next thing is to just try to, I, I don't know, just press. <laughs> I think that pressing is the way I want to call this. You're just kind of harassing Velvet. What you're doing is you're just trying to stay in this range. You're happy to just down back, take up space, especially at the beginning where she doesn't have uh, like a lot of snowflake pressure that she can try to sneak in. If you stay here, she wants to back away. If she backs away, you can basically wave dash just as fast as she can back away. And then pick that space back up again. And now you're right back to where you were, except Oleander is where Velvet was starting, and Velvet is off the screen. And you've just taken up all that space, and like literally nothing has happened. Maybe you've blocked an icicle or hit a chip or something, but Velvet is so bad at going in on characters that you don't have a lot of things you have to worry about here. She's got like a 1 billion frame startup overhead and I'm a, I'm bad at realizing when I'm in range of it because it's got really big range, but it's actually quite reactable. Like a lot of times when I'm getting hit by it, it's not that I don't see it coming. It's that 
I just don't expect it to be able to hit me from that range. So that's just like an experience thing. And once that goes away, I feel like that move is very difficult to 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 use effectively. Because again, it puts her at minus a lot. I think that Oleander can just laser beam super it. If you've got two meters, any time you block an overhead is a free Fred. So that's super spooky. She loses options like that in the second and third rounds. And even when it's the first round and she doesn't have anything yet, uh, if you're able to block it, you're plus a lot. And even if she's far enough away where you can't hit her, which she can do even against Oleander, uh, you just get to press again. And that's fine. You block the move, you press. And eventually, she hits the corner, and now she's in trouble. Now you're at this range, and she doesn't have backdash. She doesn't have jump back. She doesn't have anything to get away from you anymore. And sometimes... Uh, especially with Oleander, you can kind of just play this game, right? You can play this game a little bit further away than anybody else. You can play it from about here. And even if she pushes you back to about here, you're still playing this harassment game where you're just so close to being in a position where she has to respect your buttons. So I think that that's really good at round start as well. And then, I mean, you have the classics. If you're expecting the Velvet is always going to run away, I'm not sure how good Dash Forward Jab is. I think it might lose to some of her Shatter options. Like, uh, I've seen a lot of people like to start with, like, Round Start Shatter A. And I think that that will probably go back fast enough that uh, you can't just dash forward and catch it. I think that it'll miss it. And then, obviously, it's going to lose to uh, Jump Back, and it's going to lose to Back Dash because she'll just be out of the way of it. It doesn't lose too bad to those because, again, you're kind of just picking up the space. But I think that better, a lot of times, is just going to be jump forward and then hold back, right? You can block. You still have access to jub double jump. Uh, and her pressure isn't immense, especially when she doesn't have any magic yet for her DP mix-up, which is her only real, like, pressure mix-up. So you just kind of, like, block stuff and gain a little bit of uh, space for it even if she does happen to manage to stop you, like with anti-air or whatever, which is a risk, by the way, because you can absolutely just backdash, right? Or jump back afterwards, right? Or jump straight up and then come down. And if she mistimes it and you mess her up with your double jump, now you're in. So you've got a lot of cool options. You've got like an aggressive option, a kind of just pressure option, and a defensive option at the beginning of the round. And all of them are pretty tough for Velvet to deal with. Then from the middle game, I mean, let's be real. At some point in time during any given round, I expect this to be the position on the screen. And we sort of already talked about what you can do. You can fireball uh, with magic fireball. You really want to try to gain magic and find those openings where you can read. You want to be trying to bulldog your way in. Yes, you have teleport, but you want to be saving that magic for other stuff, especially after you get in. You really want to have some magic because she's got some pretty incredible defense, as we talked about. And uh, from here, yeah, just as we talked, like wave dashing, very good. Double jumping, very good. Contesting her uh, fireballs with yours because you do have a zone game. Very good, right? You can throw fireballs and double jump out of them. She can't do that. You actually are more actionable out of a move uh, during those moments where you can one-for-one one her than she is. If you've got a little bit of magic, maybe you throw it down to stop the snowflake. Alright, now you don't have to worry about that for a second. Now you can do other stuff. If she keeps on clipping your legs with the magic snowflake, and you throw that down, like now you've got all this space, and you can get like basically two dashes forward, before she can try to catch you, even if she's expecting you to do that. Now she's got to guess the right shatter to do. Now if you jump up in the air and she's not expecting it because she sees you through the magic down, you get a free jump in. It's super good. And Oleander, again, gets a jump in from like an unbelievable distance. <laughs> so even from this range here, which I would call 50-50, it's 50-50 because if she throws a fireball and you jump over it, you get the jump in. So... It's, it's really good. And then finally, on uh, end game, where we are hoping that the position looks a lot more like this, uh, she's got really good defensive options, but uh, even in the little bit of time that I have uh, messed around a little bit and tried to learn some things, you've got options. So the first and biggest one is you can still sort of play at this range where Velvet's just not that great. So... If you were playing from this range, you're still threatening some of your moves here. 
she can't hit you. If you backdash once, she'll be able to... Oh, let's give her some magic. So like, if you backdash once, she'll be able to catch you here, but this puts you at minus two from a position... Or, yeah, at minus two from a position where Velvet doesn't have buttons, right? It puts you kind of in that same position where you finish your string from about this range, and then you throw your fireball and your minus two. It's that kind of minus two. It's the kind of minus two where if your opponent pushes a button, they're in trouble, right? Because you've got stuff that hits them from there, and they don't have stuff that hits you back, or at least not anything that's super threatening. You might get clonked by a snowflake or something, but as long as you've got enough health to deal with that and you're not like in chip territory or one to two projectiles kills you territory you're you're kind of chilling and then obviously if you knock her down you back off and then you back off again now she just misses and now she's just at worst she for you at worst for for you as oleander she's just burned some magic and you don't have to worry about that bar of magic anymore for a second and at best you're able to catch a uh a DP like that off of the recovery. Now the problem is that her recovery on the DP is like 10 frames, which to put this into perspective is faster than the recovery of any jab in the game. So the DP is totally nuts, but it does require magic. She does have a limited amount of them and as good as they are, they are beatable. I, I came up with several of ways to beat them just, uh, just by playing around for a few minutes and uh, seeing what I could find. So the first one is, of course, just being here makes it so that it's tough for your opponent to do anything because even even if you can't quite hit with your like 5Bs from this range, if you dash forward 5B, which is a complete unreactable threat still, uh, she's not going to be able to do anything about it. Like She does not want to have to deal with trying to react to that. She just doesn't. And she's forced to here. So even if you're out of the range of her DP, now she's like, now you can play this game where she wants to like reactionary DP, but she's probably just going to throw it out and pray. And you can just beat that. She's also at a point where even if she goes for her anti air here, anti air probably misses. You can back up, throw that out. And as good as Velvet's anti air is, uh, a well-spaced Oleander JC not going to get hit by the anti-air. So she can't really throw out anti-air on reaction. Even if she throws it out correctly, Like the best she can do is maybe avoid that with her anti-air. And then you recover faster because you hit the ground and auto-recover. So she's just not in a great place for her favorite 50-50 mix-up. Basically, her best option is probably to block, which is exactly what you want it to be. You want her to, you want her to sit there and eat some of your pressure. Uh, the next is if you're feeling a little bit more like doing some real pressure here, um, let's let's come up with some stuff that works. So you can see that we can jump over it and hit it. So you know, counterintuitively, this is a DP, quote unquote DP, an invincible startup move that jumping is the correct answer against most of the time. So. Uh, the first thing that you can do, which is pretty neat, is you can time it in such a way. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, let's actually start with her anti-air. So you'll see that these are both reversal. So there's reversal anti-air, and here is uh, reversal DP, reversal, sh yeah, shatter. All right, and what you're gonna see is that we can set up timings off of hard knockdowns, which I think are a decent part of fighting against Velvet. You don't have to do it all the time, and you're probably not hitting her into the corner off of a hard knockdown, but if you can get her into the corner, doing like a, you know, small piecemeal combo so that you get a hard knockdown at the end is super frightening for her because now her mix-up is bad again. So if we just kind of launch her into the air and we go for our jump in, you see that we catch the uh, the reversal anti here. We are just so close to the ground already that it hits her. So that's a problem. But if she tries to beat that the way she would normally do that by doing her DP, you'll see that we can jump over it. So even though uh, she's got these options, we can find timings where there are weak spots. And the best part is that if you 
you don't have to react to which one you hit. So if you just hit the uh, anti-air and then you double jump into jump B and jump C again, it'll hit. And if you happen to catch the anti-air, it'll look like this. So uh, a little bit more like... Uh, well, let's just do the whole thing again, actually. It's easier. So you'll you'll catch her. Uh, I'd like to do the C on the way down just in case it cl it clicks, but it knows most of the time it will if you do it quick enough. And now you get a full combo off of it, and you can do the exact same thing on the anti air. The anti air gets hit, and you get to do the exact same combo uh, with the exact same motions. Instead of hitting the ground and double jumping, the hit stop will actually keep you in the air. So you'll do the standard like fuzzy guard break combo. Still works just fine. And now her little 50-50 on wake up game is getting broken down pretty quick. Uh, in addition. You can also do something, uh, if you've got enough magic, you can do some other different things. Like, uh, you can throw a uh, chapter trap out and threaten the teleport behind, which is a cross-up, right? And so, again, you can do that in positions where she's just kind of got to deal with it. So, um, if we're a little bit faster there... Okay, that worked a lot better when I was practicing it in training. But you can see that we can push her out of the corner there. And if we do it at the right timing, she actually can't hit us with the shatter. The shatter goes forward, it whiffs us, it doesn't work. Uh, and then obviously, of course, if you don't do anything there, and you don't try to do cross-up shenanigans, which I obviously still need practice on because they do work. If we just do this and block, she just loses. If she goes for either of those options, she's just getting hit. You don't have to do anything special. And then there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> and then you can still have these cross-up mix-ups where she can't do it, right? If she goes for the anti-air, she gets hit by the chapter trap meaty. If she goes for the invulnerable move, you're behind her. She breaks up your chapter trap, but now she's she's punishable because she just whiffed the DP right in your face. And as fast as that recovery is, you got her. So... Uh, you've got lots of cool options on offense. I think that hard knockdown is probably one of the most important things. Like you're totally happy to uh, to just take the uh, slightly lower damage in order to take away her insane 50/50 mix-up where she can just beat you for free. So uh, like another thing that you can do is double jumping at the right time also beats a lot of stuff. You you can look out for that as well. So like. This one's harder for me to do, and we'll see if I can do it real quick, and then we'll just end the video off of this because it's the toughest one. But uh, you'll see that if we... jump correctly, we're going to catch her out of her DP, and I think that uh, that is actually the 2C, J2C is actually a more um, reliable option, and to get a combo off of that, you need to go immediately into your magic chapter trap A. But if you do that, you get a full combo. And it's a huge combo because it's going to be hitting counter hit JC. Uh, like, even though you've already used your ground bounce, uh, the counter hit JC lets you get a pretty big combo into another hard knockdown. You do like 1600 damage to Velvet into another hard knockdown. And she has to guess again. And you're going to discourage this little I can 50-50 you on my wake up game real fast when she finds out that not only does the DP lose to that, but the anti-air loses to this too. Up oh, if we're a little bit faster. Oh, we just needed to read. Derp. There you go. So reading, reading is the key there to make both of those setups work. Uh, the reading, if you don't read, then you will actually get caught by, as we did there, the anti-air on uh, your way up, and you will get caught by the DP on your way down. So that's not great. <laughs> but uh, if you do the read there, it sets up the timing perfectly so that you jump out of the way of the anti-air and you're still over the DP. And so the jump up and to jump back to C just automatically hits. 
can immediately combo off of it, and it's an enormous punish, and it just brutalizes the uh, the wake up mix up game the Velvet can actually play. So that would be my suggestions. Just my first close look on uh, the game plan against Velvet, and uh, I believe tomorrow we are going to be looking at Tianhua, and I hope to see you there.